Um, right now, though, what I'd like to do is uh, introduce uh, Vic Qualis. Vic, uh, hello, how are you? Good morning, Andrew. Very well, very well. How are you? Excellent. I'm really good, thanks, Vic. Um, I'm really keen to, to hear about uh, the Qualis offering and ask, so over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to Greenbackers for organizing this event, and thank you to all the attendees for uh, for joining us today. Um, my name is Vic Prathap. I'm the CEO of Qualis. Qualis is the clean tech leader in the leather tanning industry. Now, before I tell you about Qualis, let's pause for a second to consider leather as a product. We use leather in quite a broad variety of products in our everyday lives. We have leather in our shoes, we have leather in bags, in wallets, in belts, wash straps, we have leather in our cars. Leather is truly a ubiquitous product. Unfortunately, it's also a product that historically has a poor reputation in terms of its environmental footprint, and that's for two reasons in particular. Number one, the production of leather requires vast quantities of water. So an estimated 500 billion liters of water are required for leather production every year. And number two, the chemicals that are used in the leather production process um, are uh, come out of the process as contaminants and require processing in a wastewater treatment system. So the leather industry faces a lot of pressure from multiple directions to reduce its environmental footprint, from regulators, but also increasingly from brands and consumer activists. And the problem that the industry has in adopting conventional solutions for lowering its environmental footprint is that those solutions typically lower their profitability because they increase their production cost, or they diminish the quality of the leather at the end. So everybody wants sustainability, but nobody wants to pay for it. And certainly people don't want to compromise on the quality of the product that they receive at the end. And that's the problem that we help leather manufacturers, tanners address. So first, let's start with the environmental impact. We promote sustainability in the leather industry in four ways. Number one, our system reduces water usage in key stages of leather production by 30 to 40 percent. Number two, it reduces chemical usage in key stages by 10 to 15 percent. Number three, our product is reusable and recyclable. And number four, we reduce the carbon footprint for leather manufacturers between 20 to 30 percent. So clearly, the Qualis system offers substantial benefits um, in terms of sustainability for leather manufacturers. But just as importantly, it does so in a way that the solution is actually economically attractive for leather manufacturers. Because we reduce the chemicals that are required for the production process, and chemicals are a key driver of the cost for leather manufacturers, we also reduce the cost, the production costs for leather manufacturers, and the quality of the product that they receive at the end is just as good, if not better, than their conventional process. So how do we do that? So a typical leather production process, a standard leather production process, is done in a big drum. Uh, you see a picture of that on the left-hand side of your screen. You throw in water, you throw in chemicals and animal hides into the drum, and you turn the drum for long periods of time. And the key change we made to the production process is we replaced large quantities of, of water, 30 to 40 percent in key stages, with polymer spheres. You see a picture of those on the screen, and, and there's, here's one of these on the camera that you can see over here. Now, by doing so, we are obviously reducing the water that is required in the production process, but we are also reducing the chemicals that are required for the production process at the input, because the spheres help to drive the chemistry into the hides resulting in less chemicals being required in, to go into the process, but more chemicals being delivered to the hides themselves rather than going out in the waste stream. So what have we achieved so far in terms of commercial traction? We've signed two 10-year contracts. The first is with a leading tannery in Mexico. They went live with our system in Q4 of last year. And since then, we are generating uh, early recurring revenues. We signed our second long-term contract, also a 10-year contract with a leading tannery in Brazil in January of this year, and they're going live, they're due to go live with our system in Q3 of this year. Both of these contracts, once they're fully ramped up, are expected to generate about 200,000 pounds in revenues per annum over the life of the contracts. That amounts to about 4 million pounds in revenues contracted through these tanneries. <laughs> now, 
we have also conducted a further um, um, set of trials with over 20 tanneries in Europe and Latin America, and they've consistently validated the quality of the product that's produced with our system, while achieving the water and chemical savings that uh, that uh, we we um, suggest can be um, demonstrated with the use of the Qualys system. And one of my favorite quotes from one of these tanneries is that the Qualys leather is actually too good for Gucci, meaning the quality of the product that they've received compared to the standard process is actually significantly higher. And these tanneries, of course, are our business development pipeline for 2020 and 2021. So we already have a full uh, set of um, target customers for the next two years. The leather industry is large and stable. The leather industry generates about 50 billion pounds in annual turnover on an annual basis. So uh, the, the industry has major production centers in China, in Italy, in India, Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And on an average uh, basis, they produce about 20 billion square feet of leather uh, in any given year. So it's a large, stable industry. We started as a business unit in 2013 in a company called Xeros. Over the next six years, we validated the core R&D, filed for patents on our technology, which have started to get granted already in countries such as China and also in other key markets such as in Europe and in the US. Uh, we spun out of Xeros at the end of 2019 in order to accelerate our development as an independent business. Uh, we now have the exclusive worldwide license for the use of those patents from our former parent company. There are alternative solutions, conventional solutions that aim to address the sustainability challenge in the industry, but they all have economic and technical challenges to adoption. But even if they were to get adopted, our solution would be additive, complementary to those alternative systems. We have an experienced and proven management team that has taken multiple businesses from early concept stage through to revenue generation. And we've also built a strong advisory board of leading experts in their field who will help to shape our commercial strategy, regulatory strategy, and our technology roadmap. Our business model is simple. We supply a low cost product, these spheres, but because of the patents, we have exclusivity in supplying that on a global basis. And we price based on value generated. So we charge for every kilogram of leather produced with our system, which gives us over 70% gross margin for our technology. We aim to exit this business in 2024, by which time we're targeting over 35 million pounds in annual revenues. We're seeking 5 million pounds in investment, which um, we are uh, aiming to do through multiple tranches in the course of this year. That 5 million pounds of investment is the last round of investment that we will need as a, uh, as a company and it should help us to get to break even by 2022. We've identified multiple exit options for our business. One is a strategic acquisition through chemical companies that are already in the leather industry, and we already have ongoing discussions with these companies. Number two is a private equity-driven roll-up. Private equity is well positioned to go after this space. Some of the private equity, leading private equity players have already made investments in this space. And we aim to generate about 15x cash on cash multiple for our investors by 2024. In summary, we have a clear and compelling value proposition for tanneries that's been proven through the contract that we've already signed and the further demonstrations that we've done with over 20 tanneries. We have a system that's ready to scale and a proven management team. We seek 5 million pounds in investment. We're happy to do that through multiple tranches in the course of this year and target 15x return for the investors. Thank you. Greg, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, one of the key areas for us in, in all of the uh, business that we look at is, is the transition, the transition of businesses from their current position to a sustainable position. And it did seem to us the very first time we, we saw Qualys that you were ideally placed in a key sector to be part of that transition. I can see some great questions coming in. And uh, John, I'd like to pass over to you to put one or two of those to Vic. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Hi, Vic. Uh, question from Hi. David Hansen. Uh, thank you, David. What what do those spheres become? Um, I mean, how long can they be used for, and are they recycled? So, kind of three part sure. question. Um, that, that's a great question. So, the spheres are reusable and recyclable. So, after every um, every cycle of processing, typically water is flushed down the drain. Now these spheres, um, we don't flush them down the drain. We capture them after every cycle. We clean them, put them back into storage so that they can be used for hundreds of cycles. So typically about 500 cycles, which is about 18 months of processing on site at a tannery. At the end of life, 
we take them away, bring them back to uh, the fabricator of the spheres, and they're recycled into other products. They're polypropylene based, so polypropylene is a polymer that's used in many other industries in the automotive and FMCG products. So they're reused for hundreds of cycles in a tannery, and at end of life, they're recycled into other products. <clears throat> Thanks, Vic. Uh, and a uh, question from Gillian Fleming. What's the total addressable market in terms of number of tanneries globally? Sure. So globally, there are an estimated 5,000 to 10,000 tanneries um, worldwide. Now, because many of those are very small um, in family-run businesses, it's hard to get an exact number. And that's why such a broad range, 5,000 to 10,000. The Tanneries of any meaningful size that we would target in the coming few years, we estimate are about 150 or so. So those are the ones that have the scale that will be relevant for us for the next four to five years. Yeah, and um, can you say a little bit about um, the policy and regulation drivers behind this business and who's leading? Sure. So the industry is very heavily regulated in, in, in multiple ways. Number one, in order to, to be in the industry uh, and to um, uh, process leather at all, uh, tanners need to um, get permits from their local authorities. And those permits will stipulate how much water they are allowed to use for production. And number two, um, the F, what type of effluent they're allowed to discharge, both in terms of volume and the COD content of the effluent. So the concentration, if you will, uh, of, uh, of the effluent. Uh, and that, uh, those regulations apply throughout the world. So um, in key geographies, whether it's in developing countries such as India or China or in emerging markets in Latin America, you see those sorts of regulations, but also, of course, in uh, Western Europe and, uh, and in North America. So heavily regulated industry. And over time, the regulations tend to increase, particularly in terms of F1 discharge, and the costs for the tanners continue to increase over time in terms of uh, their, their F1 discharge. So heavily regulated in terms of how much water they can use and what sort of F1 they can discharge, both in terms of volume and concentration. Thanks a lot, Vic. So great questions, great answers.